Hi guys, today we're going to look at how we can combine a character controller with root motion to make the movement perfectly match the animation. Okay, we've got a scene with a character that can run around. The character has a character controller component attached, which is used to move the character. We're also using a blend tree to blend between the idle, walk and run animations. We've covered how to create a scene like this in our 3D platformer series, so take a look if you want to know how it was done. Or, if you'd like to access the project files of previous videos, you can do so by supporting us on Patreon. You can find all the relevant links in the description. Ok, at the moment we're controlling the movement speed of the character with a script, but the speed doesn't quite line up with the animation, especially when moving slowly. This means that sometimes it looks like the character is sliding along. We're going to fix this by using root motion in combination with the character controller. Let's start by enabling root motion for the character. We'll select the character in the hierarchy and tick the apply root motion checkbox. Next, for root motion to work, we need to switch from using the generic animation type to Unity's humanoid animation system. To do this, we'll select the character model in the assets panel. Then we'll select the rig tab in the inspector and change the animation type to humanoid. We'll click the apply button to save the changes. This will create an avatar that maps the bones of the character to the generic bones of Unity's humanoid animation system. If you want more detail on this, then take a look at our video on animation retargeting. Now we've created the avatar, we need to assign it to the animator component on the character. To do this, we'll select the character in the hierarchy and select the avatar in the inspector. Next, we need to update the animations to use the character avatar. We'll click on the idle animation in the assets panel and change this to humanoid as well. We want to make use of the avatar we just created for the character, so we need to change the avatar definition to copy from other avatar. We'll then select the character's avatar as the source. We'll click the apply button to save the changes. We don't actually want the idle animation to affect the transform of the character, so we'll click on the animation tab and tick bake into pose for all three root transforms. We'll also select original from the based upon drop downs to use the original values from the source file. Then we'll click apply to save the changes. If any of this seems unfamiliar, then take a look at our video explaining root motion where this is covered in more detail. Currently, the walk and run animations won't work with root motion as they don't have any forward movement. We'll delete these two animations from the Assets panel. Then we'll head over to Mixamo.com to find some replacements. First of all, we'll select the character we've been using called Doozy. Next, we'll go to the Animations tab. We'll search for a walking animation. We'll select this one. In the past, we've ticked the In Place checkbox as we were controlling the movement in a script. This time we'll leave it unticked, as we want the animation to move the character forwards. We need to increase the character arm space, so that the arms don't clip through the body. We'll click Download. Then we'll select FBX for Unity and Without Skin. We'll click Download and save it to the Assets folder of the project. Then we'll look for a running animation. We'll select this one and download it the same as before. Back in Unity, we need to change some of the settings on the new animations. We'll select the walk animation in the assets panel. Then we'll select the Rig tab in the Inspector and change the animation type to Humanoid. We'll change the avatar definition to copy from other avatar and select the character's avatar as the source. We'll click Apply to save these changes. For this animation we want it to apply root motion to the XZ position, but we don't want it to affect the rotation or the Y position. To do this, we'll go to the Animation tab and tick Bake into Pose for the Root Transform Rotation and the Root Transform Position, Y. We'll also select Original from the Based Upon drop-downs for these two. 
will tick the loop time and loop pose checkboxes to have the animation loop. We'll click apply to save the changes and then do the same for the running animation. We'll select it in the assets panel. We'll set the animation type to humanoid and set the avatar. Then we'll switch to the animation tab and tick the loop time and loop pose checkboxes. We'll also bake the rotation and Y position. We'll go back to the animator view and we can see the blend tree has picked up the new walking and running animations as they have the same name as before. Now that we have everything set up to use root motion, we just need to adjust the movement script. We'll select the character in the hierarchy and double click the movement script to open it in the editor. We'll quickly recap the relevant parts of this script. We're calculating the direction and magnitude from the amount of input on the horizontal and vertical axis. The input magnitude is then set on the animator, which controls the blend of the idle, walk and run animations. When the input magnitude is 0, the character is idle. When it's 0.5, the walk animation plays. And when it's 1, the run animation plays. Everything in between is a blend of the animations. If you want to know more about how this works, then take a look at our video on blend trees. We then work out the speed and direction we want to move the character in the X and Z directions. Next, we calculate the speed in the Y direction, based on gravity and whether the jump button has been pressed. We don't need to worry too much about this logic in this video. Then we put it all together to calculate the velocity and use this to move the character controller. We now need to change this script to take into account that the animation is going to be moving the character forward using root motion. The obvious thing to do would be to change the character controller move to just update the Y position and leave the XZ movement to the animation. This doesn't work particularly well though and can cause some glitchy movement as the character controller and animation movement battle with each other. Rather than having one aspect of movement driven by the character controller and another by the animator, we're going to do it all with the character controller. To do this, we'll make use of the onAnimatorMove method. This method allows us to override the default root motion behaviour. We'll move the velocity calculation and move call from the update method. Then we'll set the velocity to the animator delta position. This is the position change determined by the animation. We don't need to adjust for frame rate for this, so we need to move the time.delta time multiplication out of the move call and just apply it to the Y speed. So now we have a velocity that combines the position change from the animation with the calculated Y speed. We then move the character with a single call to the character controller move method. We now have some redundant code we should tidy up. We no longer need a field to set the maximum speed, as this will be determined by the animations. And we can remove the speed calculation in the update method. Let's save the script and press play to try this out. The character movement now perfectly lines up with the animation. There is still one issue though. Sometimes the foot seems to slide backwards when the character starts walking. This is because the idle animation isn't similar enough to the walk and run animations, so it doesn't blend particularly well. To fix this, we'll stop the game and move the idle animation out of the blend tree and into its own state. We'll click on the animator tab and select the blend tree. We'll replace the idle animation with another instance of the walking animation. On this one, we'll reduce the speed to 0.2. Now the blend tree will go from slow walk, to walk, to run. Then we'll go up to the base layer. We'll drag the idle animation into the animator to create a new idle state. We'll right click on this state and set it as the default state. Then we need to transition from this to the blend tree and back again. To do this, we'll right click on the state and select Make Transition. We'll then click on the blend tree to create the transition. 
then we'll do the same to create a transition back to idle. Now we need to control when the transitions happen. We'll do this in the same way as we did in our animation transitions video. We'll click on the parameters tab and add a new boolean parameter. We'll call this is moving. Then we'll click the transition from idle to the blend tree. We'll untick the has exit time checkbox. Then we'll add a condition to check for is moving equal to true. We'll then do the same with the transition back to idle. We'll untick the has exit time checkbox. We'll add a condition and this time we'll check for is moving equal to false. So now the character will start in the idle state and transition to the blend tree when is moving is true, and it will transition back when is moving is false. Now we just need to set this parameter in the script. We already have a check to see if the character is moving. In here, we'll set the parameter on the animator to true. Then we'll add an else statement. In here, we'll set the parameter to false. Let's save this and try it out. Now when the character starts moving it looks much better. Ok, that covers everything for this video, hope you found it useful. Please leave any questions or feedback in the comments, and subscribe and click the bell icon so you don't miss the next one. If you find our channel useful and would like to help support our work, you can find us on Patreon and Coffee.com. Thanks guys!